Skim, sample collection to investigate Mars. Mars has been an incredibly fascinating planet for me from a long time. Um, as an undergraduate studying geology in the foothills of the Himalayas, I often wondered about what some of the other planets like Mars and Venus were really like and what rocks from those places were really like. I have a vivid memory of being a 10-year-old girl standing in my mother's kitchen in Phoenix, Arizona and looking at the pages of Time magazine and seeing the images from the Viking landers when they sat down on the surface of Mars the first time any human-made object had ever landed on Mars. And I saw those pictures and I was drawn in. I wanted to reach out and touch those rocks. I wanted to run my fingers through that soil. And ever since then, I've been pretty obsessed with Mars. To me, the thing that has always set Mars apart among all the planets is that it is the one planet that is most like Earth that we can imagine life as we know it, possibly having taken hold there. And so by studying Mars, we can learn about our place in the solar system, our place in the cosmos, and perhaps learn about how life first evolves in ways that are very difficult to do anywhere else. Well, I was very, very fortunate uh, to be the son of a rocket scientist. My dad worked on the Apollo program when I was very young, and so I grew up with ambition to set the very first boot print down on Mars. I became an astronaut. I flew five space shuttle missions, incredible missions up into space. Didn't quite get a chance to, uh, to land on Mars, but I know that one day, uh, you know, skim will fly and future astronauts will land on Mars on the shoulders of all the work that's come before. So I think this is a very exciting time to be alive and a very exciting mission uh, to pursue. Beginning its journey to return dust samples from Mars, Skim first configures itself for its cruise to the Red Planet. So that's the key reason I've chosen to be involved with the Skim mission, and that I see it as a high reward compared to the risk. The system development is amenable to streamlined management because it's fundamentally based on technical factors that can be controlled rather than risk factors that need to be managed. We have control of the mission because we have control not only the requirements but also the method of implementation. The technology is also proven, so we are in an evolutionary rather than revolutionary mode of development. And finally, with Lockheed Martin, we have a proven partner. After its initial cruise to Mars, Skim prepares to collect its dust samples during its Mars Aeropass by ejecting the covers from its aerogel collectors and stowing its antenna and solar arrays. The cone-shaped Skim spacecraft soars 14,000 miles per hour at a shallow angle through the Martian atmosphere, collecting its dust samples about 25 miles above the surface. A slow roll keeps the spacecraft stable, while the aerogel collectors capture impacting dust towards the aft end of the spacecraft, where temperatures are much lower than at the nose. Skim emerges from the Martian atmosphere without going into orbit, reconfigures itself for interplanetary travel, and is directed back to Earth through a deep space thruster burn. As Skim approaches the Earth after its interplanetary flight, the sample return capsule containing its precious cargo from Mars is ejected from the aft end of the spacecraft and plunges into the Earth's atmosphere. A heat shield protects the capsule during descent, then parachutes deploy to bring the capsule to a gentle desert landing. And this is when the great science of Skim begins. Our team of leading scientists will extract the dust grains from the collectors and we will send them to the best laboratories in the world. We will study the chemistry and the structure of the dust grains and decipher the history of Mars. So what's going to be amazing is after the capsule lands on Earth, our recovery team will go get it and bring it back and then we're ready for our preliminary examination. Imagine the first time that we're opening that capsule and really seeing this microscopic rock collection that we've brought back from Mars. So the dust on Mars is really special because it forms this global layer. So a scoop of this dust, which is essentially what we'll have, is like a miniature rock collection from Mars that represents all the different rock types in the Martian surface. So just by studying what different kinds of minerals are there in great detail, we'll learn about the diversity of rock types on Mars, 
By studying how altered and chemically weathered they are, we'll learn about water on Mars. And by understanding specifics of their chemical makeup, we'll learn great details about the Martian environment and whether it might have been hospitable for life. There are two ways to get a global understanding of Mars. Either you can go to well, an enormous number of places and bring back samples from all of those places, or you can bring back a sample of something that is from everywhere and distributed everywhere. And that's the ubiquitous Martian dust, the soil. Um, and what that does is it tells you about the average Mars, what the bulk composition of the crust is like, and that contains lots of information about how crustal formation processes operate on Mars. Mars is one of four terrestrial planets. There's also Mercury and Venus and Earth, and it fits somehow into that overall picture. But to understand how it fits in, you need to understand how, how the planet works, how it turns itself inside out and creates its crust. And the only way to do that is to, is to understand the composition of the crust globally. And so getting a sample of this dust that's everywhere um, is, is going to be an incredibly valuable thing. So SKIM is an incredibly exciting and groundbreaking mission for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's going to be the first round trip ever to Mars. And secondly, it'll be the first ever sample return from Mars. So in a couple of ways, we'll be completely doing something new. I'm very, very excited about the SKIM mission as a precursor to human exploration of the Red Planet. We're going to be taking uh, an aeropass through the upper reaches of the atmosphere, basically characterizing the aerodynamics to help prepare for a human uh, lander at some point in the future, and then also collecting ground truth, actual samples from the Red Planet, and bringing them home to really ground our observations from satellites as well as robotic probes that have been there. Having samples brought back to Earth, analyzed in our laboratories, and then applying that knowledge to the future designs of, of spacecraft systems will be key. So this is the most important thing I'm going to say. SKIM, as a mission, achieves out-of-the-box science by deploying in-the-box technology. So the bottom line is that every system element proposed has been done before, and it's already qualified for its application on SKIM. Bringing samples back from Mars to Earth is so critical because we have the very best equipment in labs here. Most of these pieces of equipment take up a whole laboratory. You couldn't put them on a spacecraft and send them to Mars. We want to tear these dust grains apart atom by atom and really understand what they're made of. And to do that, you need to do it in labs on Earth. There's no way around it. Getting humanity's first glimpse at something no one's ever seen before. Whether it's the surface of Pluto or holding in your hand a grain of dust that was captured from Mars. Um, it is compelling stuff. And uh, anytime you do something, you only get to do something the first time once. And that's what excites me about SKIM. It's gonna be the first Mars sample return.